stronger bond as a unit, as a team. Um, and it's one team against another, 11 against 11. And we will start then with the national anthems of both nations. What's been impressive about Algeria is there's been no World Cup hangover either. It's been business as usual. They've rolled on winning everything. Next up, the national anthem of South Africa. So much promise in this new, young and exciting South African team. Can they transfer some of that into producing what would be a significant upset in this game here tonight against Algeria? A team with a nucleus now that has grown greatly together over the last 12 months and now has the talent as well as the experience gained in top-level competition, not only internationally, but at club level, to go with it. And two new coaches over the last year as well. Ali Hodzic, who delivered them to the World Cup finals, been replaced by Christian Gourcouf, the former long-standing coach of Lorient in France. The 59-year-old had been lined up for a while to, to take over. A coach of significant repute, a shrewd tactician, promoter of young talent. If they're any good, they will get their chance to shine in his squad. 
And as for Sheikh Majaba, second spell in charge, and this unbeaten run of his has been gathering pace and it's been gathering momentum and it has been fueling a lot of belief back home in South Africa. Every piece of press media you read, you're reading about confidence, team spirit being high. Mashaba saying he's packed to stay until February the 9th and the team isn't coming home until the 10th, the day after the final. So he's fueling everybody with a belief that they can do something here. Well... I hope he's managed to get that belief over to the rest of his players. You're talking earlier, Tim, about the experience that they, they like the South African side. Uh, there's only five play abroad, so 18 out of the 23 are still based in South Africa. You compare that to only two of the Algerian side is still based in Al Algeria playing. 21 players playing abroad. That takes a lot of uh, organisation, getting them all together, getting them knitted as a team, so you would think... But on, on one hand, even though South Africa lack a bit of experience, uh, the players should be a little bit of a closer, more knit unit. And it'll be interesting to see how they start the game, whether South Africa starts on the front foot, how well they settle into the game, compared to obviously Algeria. Algeria with the more experience, will they wait and try and take the thunder out of the South African team and how they play, have a look at how the game settles down and then impose themselves on the game with their... Uh, vast experience if you like but it's uh, it's going to be fascinating good crowd the pitch looks in good condition players up for it already for a decent game both managers have got a little point to prove in uh, in what they're doing well, we will get a check on these 11s coming up in a minute six of the 11 that are going to start tonight were in that final world cup game against germany the other four Martez, Brahimi, Bentaleb and Majadi, who didn't start that game, all played significant roles in the overall campaign. Well, Majaba's team has got changes made to it because Matohu is not playing here. Let's Holianya is out as well with uh, yellow card and suspension from the game against Nigeria. Well, all five of the overseas players in the South African squad do play today. Keep taking that goalkeeper's position. Captain for the night, Doncaster Rovers, Dean Verman. And up front, the Bournemouth base forward, Ranty, partnered by Valikatsi, who's been in decent form as well. Delivering on a promise. That is what it's about here for Algeria. Everybody knows them now. The names are all pretty much household names. Down the line. First ball played in there for South Africa by Matt Laba. One of the key aspects of the South African progression over the last few months and that qualifying campaign that they had has been the fact that they've been able to mix and blend this back four together different defensive lineups in five of the six games that they played so it shows that they've got a, a quality that runs deep in their squad a look out too for these exciting fullbacks mandy and gulab they don't need any invitation to get forward over the halfway line if you missed any of the goals in the opening game, we had a really dramatic game. We'll show you those at half-time, the game between Ghana and Senegal. There's Mandy then. Only debuted last March, did Mandy. There's Matt Laba getting it clear. Only that as far as Gulab. There's Brahimi. He's enjoyed a, a fantastic season, Brahimi, after his move to Portugal with FC Porto. He really has fitted in and impressed everybody that's seen him. Very fluid as well throughout the middle of the field. This is Veguli twisting and turning Medlava all one way, then the other. Good positive start, Tim, isn't it, from uh, Algeria? Quite composed, getting the ball moving uh, around on the floor quite nicely. Keep who 
flew back in from Belgium not that long ago, the day after his wife gave birth to their son. Is Marez, who's been in decent form actually for Leicester City, he's assisted or scored in the last three games before he arrived here. Marez in there again. Going to be a busy night for Madlaba and for Flachweo. 11 here is Brahimi. Early pressure being piled on. Verguli, Slimani waiting inside the penalty area. It's important really now that South Africa just keep a calm about their game in these opening minutes and don't concede early. Yeah, first 20 minutes, very important. You don't want to, to go a goal down early on, as you say, Tim. Don't weather the storm. That's it. And there's Medjani. Remember when uh, Gerard Udier beat off competition from Manchester United and Arsenal to sign him from Saint Etienne for Liverpool during his time there. And uh, those of you with good football memories might well remember seeing him, Captain France, in the Toulon Festival, which we show on an annual basis back in 2006 when he was coming through. He's had a bit of artwork done on his arm since then, Tim. <laughs> Furman, the captain tonight for South Africa. Gulam with the throw-in. Jali turning, putting his own defenders under pressure again as the... Heat remains on that South African back four. That was Maniisa. Back to Veguli. Is Madlaba coming back in toward his own defence in his own penalty area? Not a great idea. They still cannot pick up any meaningful possession here. There's Bentaleb. Good hearts, strong challenge. Now, can they get the break on here? Villacazzi over the halfway line. Ranti is there as well, but again, diving in to make these challenges, and that's a free kick that goes South Africa's way, and it gives them a chance to just slow things down a bit here and just get a feel of the ball and make a few passes. Yeah, just got to take the time a little bit now. You see bottom of the boot showing in the challenge from Mental Lab. Not allowed these days, even if you do play the ball. Good job by Elice. There's Veguli. Brahimi switching it. Look at Slimani right on the shoulder there of Kurtzer. That's where it's going to be very telling. Kurtzer only made his debut against Congo in the qualifiers in 2014. Youngest ever player to represent South Africa at 17 years and 360 odd days old. Clearance by Natchway, and that's going to be a free kick. So Villa Katsi, keep an eye on him. He scored goals in the last two friendlies against Cameroon and Mali. The scorer in form. Yeah, it didn't seem too much wrong with the challenge, just used his body strength early just to get a flick on the ball. But obviously, the referee saw it a little bit differently than we did. There's a long, long way out, but nothing like giving a range tester here for Keat early on. Oh, hit straight at him, and Keat at the second time of asking, getting to the ball before Soleimani could get anywhere close to it. And give him a bit of confidence as well. Well, that's all you're really trying to do, Tim, I think, from that distance, is get the ball moving a little bit. And even if the keeper does make a save, he might spill it back into the path of another one coming forward. The ball did wobble about a bit. You see, it wasn't spinning true. It did come back off the keeper and nearly paid dividends for them with Slomani nearly getting on the loose ball. It was uh, Madlaba. The free kick given away by Lachweo.
referee just trying to calm everybody down. A little bit of a shove in the back. Clatsuel just getting a little bit too tight. Referee coming into play as well. Yeah, more pressure from a set play kind of built here. Medjani has gone forward for this. Slimani is waiting in the penalty area as well. And it's flashed right in there towards the near post. Well, they could have flicked that up in the air. Slimani and Medjani were waiting to just apply a finishing touch here. And it nearly came back off the keeper again. He didn't get it as cleanly as he would have wanted to. It bounced just in front of him. So Key is a two saves to make and not done it very cleanly so far. This team beat Brazil in the Olympics. Remember the under 23s back in 2000. Majaba. His reign first time round came to an ignominious conclusion on the eve of the African nations back in 2004. Aboard by Mandy. And again to Brahimi, who's just been given a license to just roam around wherever he wants to go, wherever he feels he can do damage, he is. There's Jali. The Conga. And Furman. Can't put two or three passes together at the moment. They've got plenty of pace. You can see Manisa. He and Fala will switch flanks throughout the course of the game. There is Fala. Latchware's throw. Yeah, hitting it long for the cats. He is waiting for the knockdown there from Ranty. Well, we saw that used as a policy by Gabon in the opening game as they tried to hit the forwards very early. Those with pace, and it worked as well because they were getting a Bani Yang in behind the Burkina Faso defense. Ah! Good ball first touch for Mboli. Well, it's a good ball into the 18-yard box by McLava, but there's no South African player anywhere to be seen near that 18-yard area. Very easy for Mboli to just come and take that catch. No pressure on him whatsoever. It seems a very narrow pitch to me, Tim. It seems quite congested in that midfield area. Not a lot of space. So Furman giving away the free kick. What they've got to stop doing is giving away free kicks in these reasonably advanced positions again. That's Mares going down, the Leicester City man. Yeah, went down very easily. I think he knew he was going to be under pressure. So what happens these days is that any sort of contacts made by an opponent and the player goes to the floor, nine times out of ten, he gets a free kick. As we said, he's been in decent form for Leicester. With his assists and his goals, he was a player in, in the early days when he was coming through the uh, academy team, the B team in Le Havre. He built up a significant goal-scoring reputation, but never managed to transfer it fully into the first teams. Slimani a target. There's Brahimi. They've also got Medjani in there again, and look at those white shirts in advance of the South African defenders again. Just landed kindly for Keat, but again given away. Ranty dropping deep, trying to get a move going for South Africa. And he getting caught here. Three went in the penalty area, including right on the edge of the area. Manny Issa is in a great position then if they could have got a cutback. Gulab, there's Zavala. It's good run, good pace down that right flank from Fala. Good through ball, went in a nice corner for them. Takes the pressure off a little bit. And Fala is going to take this. Ranti is in there, Nakonga is in there as well. And that is going to be a free kick. Been industrial that by the South Africans. And Slimani.
it could have gone the other way it was his foot that was the highest well you tell me how that's not foot up tim you tell me why the free kick's gone the other way any other place on the pitch that is a high kick that's a foot up and that's a free kick against a player with a foot up that should be a penalty you can't be playing the ball with your foot six foot off the ground and winning a free kick I don't know what the discussion is here with Mboli. Born in Paris, he began his career and with Marseille, didn't ever play that, or at Hearts. He turned up in Scotland for a very short period of time, but he's been all over the place since then, stopping off last in the Philadelphia Union in the MLS. He never wears any other look apart from one of angst. There's Gorkouf. His uh, son's not a bad player either, Johan. Kurt uh, downfield. It's going to be an important test, as we said, to such a big game actually afford that much responsibility to a player who is just 18 years of age. But it just shows how much faith that Mashaba has got in some of these young players here. If you're good enough, Tim, you're old enough. So money not going to get on the end of that. Brought down by Jolly. And Jolly's done well to escape here. Just gallops over the halfway line once the return ball gets it. But only until Mejani slides in to take it away. As I said a minute ago, it's a tight pitch. There's not a lot of room on there. It looks a bit small side to side. And it's, it's not the biggest lengthwise either. Space will be at a prime. Zamboli. Good crowd inside the stadium again. They've really stayed in from the conclusion of the last game. Uh, it's been pretty well attended, actually, so far. And what has been as good an opening to any Nations Cup tournament as we've seen in recent years. As Mandy into Brahimi. Quick to close down, looking to try and pick up Feguli. It'll drop to Bentaleb. Bentaleb leaves it. Brahimi again into Mandy. Really good hard work that's been put in from the South African defenders. They're chasing absolutely everything. Now Conga here up against Mares. Bends one in. Keeper claims. Some good play again by Algeria. Nice passing movement. You can just see uh, how much Brahimi wants to get involved in the play. He's here, he's there, he's everywhere. He's got that free roll. This is a good set. Into Nakonga. Thomas shown a few nice touches in this game so far as well. Here's a good set. Given away, Bentaleb. The free kick given away again. They've got to watch these as they mount up throughout the course of the half. And the referee might begin to lose patience. They might to start, they might start to pick up yellow cards, which could come back to affect them later on. Is Matlaba, one of a crew of players from the Orlando Pirates. Dropping over the bat, looking for Ratti to get in. Ratti is in here. Just too much pace on the ball. Embody was out. We told you about this guy beforehand. It's his speed. The Bournemouth forward has got plenty of it. Well, he showed the centre half a clean pair of heels here. The ball just played in the back. The, after Berner suddenly goes on, knocks it past the keeper. On his plate, nine times out of ten, you see the striker go down. Simulating he's had a bit of contact. Ranti actually hurdled over the top of the keeper, nice and clean. He's got four goals in the qualifying competition. 
dislocated his shoulder back in November, but he's uh, got back to a reasonable level of fitness, which is obviously why he's here. Key member of this team. This is Mandy. And again, it's comfortable from Keat, the Belgian based keeper. Before they come with Jali, he's got to be carefully giving away possession as he gallops over the halfway line. Many Issa. Lachweo. Again into Matlaba. 20 here is Maniisa. And trials Maniisa, Chelsea, and Manchester United, Blackburn Rovers, Conch, Strasbourg. Nobody took him. Mm. There he is again, Maniisa. Into Furman, the captain for the night. A big, big privilege for him. Clearance by Gulam. was the great from uh, Mares on uh, Nakonga. Into Brahimi. Slimani off through the middle. They've got Feguli just down below us. Bentaleb shuffles it over to Mandy. Here's Medjani. Continued his run there, Mandy, but the play's broken up. Ranti got a touch in there. Whoa, he just slipped at the vital moment then. It's the first chance they've had of a ball that could have split open that Algerian defence. Here's Brahimi. Into Feguli. Slimani waiting in the area. Mares is there. Again, Brahimi. Feguli in front of him. Brahimi going for goal. And he got real power behind that. And again, good test. But this keeper, Keith, has shown a very safe pair of hands in this game so far. But Lava giving it away again this time, though. Uh, Feguli is the furthest forward. And Kurtz. Nineteen minutes gone. We're almost at the halfway point of the first half here. Of the favourites for this competition, Algeria nil, South Africa nil. Ruji Amboli. Algeria got a poor record actually in opening games 15 different AFCON tournaments they've won only three opening games in the 15 that they've played They're looking for Slimani nice touch Slimani but that was very good defending from Kurtzer yeah, very good indeed just helped the uh, the attacker off use his body strength didn't dive in so he goes down Challenge there, I think, was from Marez. Swing it away to that jury. You can see apologies if you uh, had a bit of picture break up there. Yeah, I think that challenge was a, a knee banger, knee against knee. Pretty painful. Get a bit of width interception by Verguli into Brahimi Slimani. Just look at that, he's up there on his own. Prosaic from the midfield from Algeria getting up in support of him. Always the possibility that, regardless of how well they prepare, whatever they say, there is a degree of underestimation of the opposition. Poor one there by Brahimi, claims he was fouled. Referee not playing, Mani Issa into Jali over the top that's a great ball that is by Jali and Ranti I don't think he realized how much time he had there Ranti that is a big big disappointment but what a good ball it was in the first place yeah better just to get hold of it keep possession for a minute try and pull it back to somebody on the edge of the box He has Bournemouth top in the championship as who Ranti is with. He's been used predominantly as a, a substitute in the campaign. He's only scored twice in the league, and that was in that incredible 8-0 away victory in Birmingham that before Christmas. 
Yeah, it's not a bad, uh, not a bad win, is it? Well, sensational day, wasn't it? Callum Wilson, of course, the first choice is the player that is keeping him out at uh, Bournemouth. Yeah, doing very well in the league as well. Oh, they're giving it away. Ratty's got it again here now. Ratty waiting for a bit of support here. Furman's got it. Can he hit one? Oh, he was so unlucky there. Crashes back off the other side of the bar, and they're in again. The flag is up. I said just a couple of seconds ago, you just get the feeling that Algeria are taking things a little too easy here. Yeah, yeah, they're a little bit loose of the bag. Great shot from Furman, and Sean Bowley got a touch on that and got it onto the crossbar. It's a super snapshot. That was your offside decision, but just before that, we see this shot. Did he get a touch? Did he get a finger on it? Hard to tell. Might see it from here. Oh, he did. He did. Super touch. Just enough to get it onto the crossbar. You see the ball move.